Hello everyone, welcome to AI Anytime channel. You know, in today's video, we are going to have a look at React Pi. So it's a new library for building UI, user interfaces in Python without JavaScript. Okay, so it's like React made with Python. Okay, it's a very new release. Okay, I think this, this library has been released this week itself. And we are going to have a look, we are going to explore this library okay from the documentation and from the github repository that how we can use this library to build you know python application faster or is it going to help us you know in data science or ai or machine learning workflow and how it's going to look like when we are going to utilize this versus we already have you know multiple frameworks to create web applications and we have also, if you talk about Python, we have Streamlit, we have uh, PyScript, we have multiple frameworks which helps you write, you know, code with less amount of code and also create web applications. But how React Pi is different from those, you know, frameworks or library because React is a JavaScript library. If you are not familiar with React, okay, you can go ahead and look at React JS as well. So if you see currently, I am on React Pi. Okay, uh, it says. Uh, React Pi is a library for building user interfaces in Python without JavaScript. Okay, so React Pi interfaces are made from components, which is a core of React, which is a library in JavaScript. As I said, you know, React was developed by Facebook in, if I'm not wrong, in 2013. Okay, and it's one of the most used JavaScript library at this moment. Okay, and they are famous for components. They have multiple features. They use utilizes virtual DOM. You know, they have their component based architecture, they have React hooks, router, etc. So there are, you know, abundance of, you know, features when we talk about React JS and how we can, you know, use those, uh, basically the features or the services that React JS provides and how we can bind it together with Python to build Python applications uh, with ease and also scalable. Okay, so if you see it says, which look and behave similarly to those found in React JS and designed with simplicity in mind. React Pi can be used by those without web development experience. People like me, I don't have much web development experience, you know, while also being powerful enough to grow with your ambitions. Okay. So I can myself write a bit of code in JavaScript, but I don't have much expertise when it comes to JavaScript guys. Okay. So, you know, people like me who can basically utilize this to build applications. Okay, on having the same features of React JS, at least on some extent. Okay, so if you see, it says at a glance they have given you some example code. If you see, it says uh, a hello world application as usual. Okay, and we click on result, it will show you hello world. So if let's come back to main.py. If you see on main.py, it's it's have a function. It's called define app function. Return HTML dot h1, which is a header one okay html which is going to render the ui you know through html and then on h1 having a h1 tag and we are passing that string hello world over there okay and then we are running the app we are using the run you know from react pi import so we are using component html so if you see the structure guys okay if you are family let's talk about python you know mainly when you're talking talking about the programming here or if you see this programmatically this maybe look like a decorator Okay, so if you are familiar with Flask or FastAPI or Django or any other, you know, Python based frameworks, okay, you will see that this look like a decorator when we talk about Python frameworks, okay, and then we have a function then and we are running that function, okay, through that run app, okay. So this is how it looks like currently. Okay, and they have given you some sample examples, you can see the documentation over here, you can just read about adding interactivity, you know, creating UI interfaces, etc. They have managing state because state management is, you know, one of the core feature when you talk about React JS, which is currently not available for React Pi. In this case, you can see escape hatches, understanding React Pi. These are all under construction. So it's in a very, very early stage, guys. Okay, I just wanted to create this video to give you some, maybe some update because I was just reading about React Pi, you know, on Reddit community. And I thought, okay, I will create a video so you guys can also get little bit of awareness about react pi and you can also explore that okay I'm, I'm still myself exploring it at this moment so and they have a github repository as well it's by reactive python okay and you can see react pi it's already has around 86 issues people are talking about different bugs or feature enhancement etc if you come over here the same thing 
they have given you at glance you know some something like you know jupiter notebook you can also use that inside jupiter notebook but the good thing about this is that it supports multiple backends okay so the the thing that you see it's it supports flask it supports fast api tornado for example which is again used by streamlit okay uh, streamlit uses tornado as a backend engine there because okay, so you can see you can utilize this as well as a backend engine okay to run react py on top of it so it looks good you know and you can also externally use it as jupiter plotly dash okay for dashboard etc and then you have django as well that's that's how you can leverage this at least you can bind it together with backend engines as well both internally and externally itself so external when i say you can use react py inside jupiter notebook Okay, you can also you know do that as well if you click on that jupiter as well over here you can see that now you'll see here they have given you some documentation that how you can utilize this inside you know jupiter notebook as well okay so this is a github repository that's their uh, documentation page so how how are we going to install this guys so if you click on getting started it says installing react pi if you click on that what it will show you that it depends if you want to install it fully you can just do pip install react pi to install it completely the full version of react pi which is available at this moment but if you want to rely on a starlet backend you can also do that as well so there are native backend you can see over starlet or tornado or fast api for example i have installed pip install react pi so let me show you my folder structure this is my folder structure let me show you so we have a virtual environment that I let me open that in terminal and code itself. So let me just do that. So what I will do, I'm gonna go inside VNV, CD VNV, CD scripts, you know, dot slash activate and CD dot dot, CD dot dot clear, and then I will go inside code. Now if you see, I have a file that I'm going to utilize it. How we are going to you know so so this json file on the react pi or using react pi on the ui and how easy it is to show that okay without having much information about react js or javascript or html you know all together how are we going to show this as well so what i'll do i'm just going to create an app.py so programmatically we are not changing the habit of using python guys we are still going to use python with little bit of flavor of react okay the react js Okay, and I'm talking about programmatically, not from the feature standpoint, like you know hooks or hooks or routes or you have seen we are talking about hatches or it's state management, etc. We are not going to focus on that in this video at least. We're just going to see how we can how we can install this, how we can use the, the how we can use the code that is available on the documentation, how we can make some changes to write our code and see if we are able to make some modification. Okay, so already have installed you can see in this virtual environment in this virtual environment if you come to lib you will see the things have been installed into it okay here over here you can come down you'll see that we have something called react pi when you click on react pi it will show you everything inside it so we have installed react pi let me just minimize this over here and in app.py what we are going to be able to write the code now so if you come over here okay uh, let me show you okay you have they have a good documentation at least so far Okay, so you can see this this is how you run this from react py import html if you click on this let me just click this and let me just show you okay app.py if you click on this what they are doing so they are from react py they are importing html because that's where we are going to render this on html we are going to use a div element okay, or div tag in inside that div tag we have a h1 tag header one my to-do list and then we have some list inside it you know as a to-do like design a cool new app build it share it share it with the world etc etc how do we run this same as we always do to run a python application so that's what we are doing. gonna do here python app.py so when you click on python app.py it will open you know uh so it, it's not showing you anything because we are not utilize using any you know backend in the over here Okay, any component etc but this is what we are going to do we are not using any component or stuff okay so if you come over here let me just remove this let's see how we are going to use the first component so this is how we are going to use the first component okay we are not doing run here okay we don't have any function defined so if you see over here in this it's it does from react pi import component html and run and if you see it has a component defined inside this component is has a photo it uses an image tag inside html it has a source of that image with you know in style it has a width of 50 percent and in alt it has a puppy and stuff okay so let's copy this okay and you come back over here let me just remove this 
and let me just save it so in you know, running this function over here photo that you see now if you come back what it does it says it's running uvicon running so now you see uvicon what does it mean guys okay it's running with starlet application so uvicon is a you know basically a web server that helps you run starlet or fast api based application and it runs on port 8000 by default so if you come over here you just do local host 8000 it will open the react pi if you see over here it it basically shows you an image that is available on this you know url which is the source from pick some dot photos id whatever 237 500 or 3 so this might be i'm not sure this might be height or width and you can see it over here okay this is one of the example that how you do it how you run this okay you have a run you have a photo and you just run it over here this is basically the tag that you have to understand a bit when we're running it for the first time now let's do let's see how we can you know make some changes and how we can use this data i have a json file here 2019.json this is the same json file that i have used in previous videos where i have created chat csv with uh, i think chat with csv okay so i've created an application where i have used this gdp data this is the data of gdp of different countries finland denmark norway there are multiple countries their gdp their score etc so there's uh, some information about the countries how we can leverage this to you know do that so let me just help you understand so from react by import component html run let's also have hooks and now let's also have something called pathlib and json because it's a json file and we also need pathlib because we need the path there so from pathlib import path this should be capital here the first p so caps and then let's have import json so i'm just going to do it over here import json and inside that let's have something called define some you know constant we're not going to change this so here path and inside this i'm just going to do file this looks nice so this is we will define now our data path so let's do that and in data path we are going to do here dot so what we can do is parent folder and space and then here we can have 2019.json what is the file name that we have so this is done and then just load the data by so json dot loads not codec sorry json dot loads and here i'm just going to pass that data path dot read text we have to read that text so data underscore path excuse me data underscore path dot read this looks good and it's a function so this is okay now we have loaded our data now let's define the component guys so i'm just going to do component as i said this might look like a decorator when you talk about python it's not a function it's just like a weird defining a component and now we'll define uh, let's define a function so you know you can use snake case you can use camel case when you're talking about you know writing the code uh, the way we write our code guys so in javascript or python there's a different way of different structure or style of writing code okay we follow a snake case for some programming languages we follow camel case for some other programming languages okay so here let's follow a little bit of javascript style okay so so data so data and info so this is the function that i'm writing okay and now here in so data info i'll just have index set index so let me first show you a json file if you see so we have index one two three and inside that we have key values pair that we have to you know consider when we are defining the structure so set index and let's have hooks dot use state we are going to use the state because we'll have an on click button so once you click on the button next it will show you the next next values for that uh the, the country that we have okay so hooks and then we'll use the use state feature so use state and let's pass zero so this is done and now let's have define handle and let me so let me see if we have some some documentation related to this guys okay so if you come over here i don't know if we have something like this i don't see let's let's write it ourselves okay so define handle click as we say we have an on click event so click event this looks nice and then we have set index we'll just iterate it with the plus one so index plus one so this looks good index plus one now we have this def we define handle click event set index index plus one and then 
so let's see what are the things that we have so we have overall rank country region okay so now let's have a uh, something first we let's define a bounded index so bounded index and then we have index and we have to read the length of entire data so length and we can use this is how we do it in python so index by length of data and that's our bounded index and then we can we need to make this a string so bounded index uh, and that's go the string and then int and bounded index and then plus let's add plus one so it rated plus one and now we have our data item so data item and uh, in this data item data and it's a bounded index this suggestion is okay so data item data bounded index which is a list and and now let's see what are the so first we have overall rank so once we define first we can just copy paste so overall rank overall rank and in overall rank data item and inside that we're just going to pass this so we're just going to write overall overall space rank okay this is okay overall and now let's just copy paste guys so overall rank i'm just going to do control v So here in overall rank, we'll just replace this with uh, country, let's see, country or region, so country underscore or region, and here I'm going to just write country, country or region, the next is score, so this will go score, score. So let me write this guy for the all the uh, values that we have over here and I will once I complete it I will again you know, resume the video from there. So now you can see guys I have written up to the perceptions of corruption which is my last value here perceptions of corruption inside this JSON file and now what we are going to do we are going to just return this we have to return this on using HTML div and we'll have an on click button of next and then we'll have some h2 or h3 tag to present the value okay or the return the value or display the value whatever you call it so html div and inside this div i'm just going to write all for all the values that we have so the first thing that we have we need a button which which the end user will click and it will go for the next to show the all the values for you know con respective countries there okay so html button and here i'm just going to write you know on click so it's on click and this on click what we're going to do here we our on click is nothing but the handle click so on click we have defined above you can see above right handle click so it's not an event which already have passed it on top handle click and then we're just going to do next here so just, just let's write next which is the label for that button next excuse me this going to be out here so next let me just do one thing control v and this is okay so html button next and this will be here like comma and then this looks good so we have html button on click okay and handle click and I don't know, this is not going to be okay this looks nice okay handle click and now so we have html dot button on click and handle click and next and then we'll use a s3 tag guys so html dot s3 and then we will show all our values on the ui okay the user interface that we are trying to build here so you can see html dot s3 and let's just do that so overall overall rank and I'm just gonna do here overall rank let me just then inside here and let me just write overall whatever we have defined okay overall rank so I'll just copy paste here copy paste so we have overall rank and it will all go comma so let me just do that 
So let me just do that. So what I will do guys, I will just pause the video because I have to re and rename it okay, for all the this value here. So I'll just pause the video and I will resume it once it is done. So you can see guys, I have also completed this HTML.S3 tags where we are defining all these you know, la uh, the labels and then we are returning this rank, country, score, GDP, whatever key value pair that we have inside this JSON file okay, for capital uh, for the different countries. And so now what we are going to do, if you see we have a function called so data info. So this function now kind of contains our values that we are going to basically display on the user interface you know, with the help of react pi. So we have defined a component inside that we have a function and that function uses the this data that we have loaded json.loads and we are just going to, we have an on click event there. So when we click on the button, it shows you the the uh, values for the respective countries okay and when you click on next it shows the next one now what we're going to do here we have to run this so we are going to use a run that we have imported on top so if you see on top we have from react by import component html run and hook so from this run we're just going to use that from run class or module in python we call it so in run we're just going to use this you know so data info so so data info okay and not the we are not going to use that fan fan says it's there okay run so data info so how are we going to run this guys now is that okay it's, it's same way that we run so we'll come over here and we'll do python app.py which is fine name so python app.py and once you click on that you will go to localhost 8000 and we'll click on enter now you'll see the details over here so the values that we have inside the JSON file. So overall rank one for Finland, the score, the other values like GDP per capita, the, all the information that we have inside the JSON file for countries, you can see it over here. When you click on next, which is an on click event. Okay, so we have that, uh, if you see, if you come over here, you'll see hooks.use underscore state. Okay, the, we are using the state over here for on click event, if you can see. So this page is not getting refreshed guys, okay, and you can see just clicking on next, you will see all the next values for the countries that you can see. So this is what we did in, you know, in this video guys. So you can see it over here. Maybe you can explore more on React Pi that how it helps you create, you know, user interfaces in Python with the React JS features. If people like me who don't have much expertise in web technologies can, you know, leverage this library. You know to create applications you can go through the documentation the github repository you can also find it out if you need the code it's available on my github repository i'll also share that link in the description please participate in the uh, discussion on github you can see on this repository react by the github discussions There's a lot of discussions going on currently about you know discord server and how in how we can integrate react by with django or you know whatever is required right people are discussing about it over here you know connecting to metamask for example for some blockchain capabilities also you can also have a look at that as well so this is what i wanted to cover in this video guys you know react pi i wanted to see how we can write some code with the react js features in python and how we can install the library and write some code to run that and you can see we have used the starlet backend to run this you know on uvcon so i hope you like the video guys if you like the video if you like the content you know please give a thumbs up okay please hit the like icon there okay, if you haven't subscribed the channel yet do subscribe the channel guys okay this will motivate me to you know create you know content in near future upcoming trends that you see the generative ai large language model i have been creating a lot of contents you know mainly the projects that you can leverage language model large language models or this you know generative ai you know deep fake etc you can find multiple videos you know on my channel so please subscribe if you haven't subscribed the channel yet. Okay, and please share the video and channel with your friends and to peer. So if you have any thoughts or feedback, please let me know in the comment box. Okay, that's all for today's video guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.